much the DEP on the standards on whether they're health based, like what at what like what determines what safe level is for the groups that are in this permit. We're having trouble here yeah. yeah, that's what I was trying to repeat. I'm having trouble hearing here myself. There's a Back here. I, I'm not sure I'm going to phrase this correctly if I don't uh, re re repeat it, feed me better. I think the question was, uh, what, what are the standards based on? Are they health standards or, or what? Uh, what I said was uh, it was a technology. The answer, the quick answer is that our evaluations are done based on technology standards, not health standards. Okay? Uh, what we do, the, the underlying concept in uh, uh, predominantly across the country is technology based. What it says essentially is that uh, as, uh, as older plants and older sources uh, fall apart and become, you know, uh, useless, are replaced, they, they need to be replaced with things that are cleaner. Uh, competition drives a lot of that. We've had uh, continual, more or less continual better uh, uh, combustion for gas, for example. So there are a number of burner manufacturers that continually buy for the lowest emissions uh, and so on. We don't do health-based, uh, uh, we, don't, we don't make evaluations of permits based on health standards in a direct fashion. We follow, we follow the lead of the uh, federal government on that. There is a um, uh, what's called a prevention of significant deterioration regulation that applies to large permits. This is, this is in the big category that I was talking about. In fact, the power plant that I referenced was subject to PSD, prevention of significant deterioration. And what had to happen in that case is that modeling was done uh, locally for the local uh, plant to determine whether or not the uh, ambient air standards or those, those emissions of significance that were being, uh, they were coming off of that plan uh, to, to predict whether or not there, any, there would be any violations with this new emission source. So for some of the large permits, very large permits like that one, there are direct analysis of health issues. In this case, there is none. Uh, typically, you know, for the smaller cases like this one, there isn't any. Does DEP look at the cumulative effect of you have this plant, you have Sunnyside being permitted in Kernersville, you have River Hill, Waste Coal Plant being permitted in Carthus. Are all three of these being looked at together so that you don't go over any limits that would be unsafe? The, the question is, are we looking at, uh, uh, at some of the uh, more recently large sized plants that are permitted, are we looking at the, uh, the potentially at the uh, cumulative impacts of them? And the answer is no. Uh, my own experience would tell me that that would not be necessary. Uh, the, uh, the emissions from these plants uh, are not likely to affect uh, each other. If there was some reason to believe that that might happen, uh, we, might, we might consider that. Uh, the, uh, we have some experience with the permitting of the uh, River Hill coal facility. That's, by the way, that's no secret here. That's that's the power plant I've been referring to. Uh, it, uh, I'm sorry, River Hill Power, not River Hill Coal. It's a different company. Uh, we uh, we found that they did not have any significant impact. It's very unlikely, in my judgment. I'm not a modeler. I will admit that right up front here. Uh, it is, we don't suspect that there would be any interaction amongst those three plants. So we, don't, we didn't see any reason to, to uh, pursue that line of questioning. Okay. Uh, just a comment, I think that's a bit ironic considering that earlier you said you have to look at the downwind effects of other states west of us blowing into Pennsylvania, yet these three plants in the same county somehow won't affect each other at all. So I'm just surprised to hear that.